16,000 pounds. That's the amount of waste Americans discard every single second. In fact, Americans discard more trash than anyone else on the planet. 16,000 pounds per second. And this number does not include construction waste, or it ends up along roadsides or polluting waterways. It piles up constantly, everywhere, and that is comprised of thousands of different materials that never break down. Nearly 70% of our trash goes directly into landfills. I visited this landfill recently, and I could quickly see that they are running out of space. I took this photo of some workers near the boundary of the landfill, where they are actually relocating 40-year-old trash that then dig this pit deeper to fit more trash. Landfills aren't bottomless pits. Get that out of your head. They store our trash. They don't make it disappear. This past October, the largest landfill in the country reached capacity and was forced to close. That place, it's no longer a landfill. It's a land full, with trash standing as high as a 40-story building. Yet nothing stopped the trash from still coming. And that trash is now loaded onto trains to travel 200 miles away to be packed inside an abandoned gold mine. Think about that. I'll compare this to when you were a kid and you were told to go clean your room. <laughs> and if you're anything like me, what would you do? Well, you would hide everything. You'd cram all your stuff inside of your closet. Well, just like your closet, the stuff inside of these landfills will still be there when we go to open them. And the materials we pack inside of these landfills don't come from bottomless pits either. Through deforestation, mining activities, drilling for fossil fuels, even killing animals, we relentlessly terrorize the environment. If we paid the actual cost to the environment, for the things that we use one time and then discard, we'd never be able to afford them. We cannot expect a livable future with careless consumption. Yet what I see in these landfills, it's not trash. What I see are materials full of opportunities. Now, I grew up working in my family's sporting goods stores. We were the great indoors for people who love the great outdoors. And I love spending time outdoors from you know, being on the lake to skiing, biking, hiking. I won't pretend to be a raft guideologist like Pat, but about on the same level. Well, it was while working there where I grew increasingly uncomfortable with the massive amount of materials our stores consumed. Everything we sold had embedded carbon, meaning long before it reached our warehouse, it was extracted, processed, manufactured, packaged, transported. Each step left a footprint outside of my perspective. It didn't make sense then to continue using products that left footprints all over the environment in which I enjoyed all my free time. For having put so much effort into producing these products, why not recapture them? I decided at that point that everything I bought would be made using recycled materials. Now, that was a frightening commitment at first, trust me. I literally was saying goodbye to all of the products and brands I ever knew, to all the stores where I ever shopped. Yet in this process, I discovered that the symbol for recycling stands for so much more than you imagine. Let alone does it stop landfill waste buildup, it reduces greenhouse gas emissions, creates jobs, preserves natural resources, saves energy, boosts local economies, prevents pollution. Lots of great things. As I continued researching, I began to see beyond trash, especially beyond those materials you place in your curbside bins at home. And I'll show you what I mean by that. These common recyclables we know have great value, if not identical value, when recycled. 
Paper can be recycled into paper, just as glass can be recycled into glass. And we're good at it, too. One aluminum can can be recycled into another aluminum can and back on the store shelf within just two months. Yet these same materials, many times, are reborn as something completely different. For example, they have already become entire buildings. This footwear company's concept store in Shanghai is built entirely from trash. Specifically, 2,000 water bottles, 5,500 aluminum cans, and 50,000 CDs and DVDs. Yeah, CDs. And you probably th only thought CDs were for talented artists to create statues like this cute penguin. <laughs> but that same technology for recycling CDs, when combined with agricultural waste, can produce such products as these sunglasses. Anything can be recycled. In fact, everything I'm wearing today is made from recycled materials. My shirt and my pants are recycled polyester. My belt once was a bicycle inner tube. My shoes are recycled rubber. Even my socks were once plastic bottles. Speaking of clothing, I assume many of you own a pair of these, since over 450 million pairs of jeans are sold in the U.S. every year. That's 14 pairs per second. Once jeans have reached their last leg, that discarded denim can actually be reprocessed back into its natural state as cotton fiber. Those fibers, then, are used as insulation in residential homes and commercial buildings. Before I show you some more cool recycled materials, one thing you'll notice as we look at the individual materials is the sheer volume discarded on an annual basis. For instance, 260 million tires a year are discarded. Millions of them, unfortunately, are burned for their fuel value, but that releases this toxic soup of pollutants. However, when properly recycled, they can take the place of everyday items, such as furniture or bags, or as infrastructure, such as sidewalks or playgrounds. And these big, heavy, solid tires have recognizable material value. But what about cigarette butts? 5.6 trillion cigarette butts enter the environment every year. How horrible is that? Cigarette butts, amazingly enough, though, can be recycled. The, the paper and tobacco can be composted, and the cigarette filter, which is commonly thought to be made from cotton, is actually made from a recyclable plastic. That plastic is already being used to manufacture shipping pallets, as lumber for building homes, even right back into ashtrays to further collect them. That same material can be used to make clothing, but, you know, people are still a bit weary about wearing cigarette butts. <laughs> Scientists recently in South Korea found that cigarette filters make an energy storage alternative to batteries. Batteries that could be used in hybrid cars, windmills, even pacemakers. Would you have guessed that cigarette butts could perform all of these functions? The technologies for incorporating recycled materials continue developing right before our eyes. Researchers at MIT just last month found that lead from used car batteries can be recycled into solar cells. The lead from one used car battery could produce enough solar panels to power 30 homes. So, so far, you've already seen how CDs, jeans, tires, even cigarette butts all have inherent value beyond their original function. Recycling these unlikely materials is as much about innovation as it is about preservation. But it's not about our lives. It's about our children's future. When you leave your trash on the curb, 
You are not leaving it for the garbage man. You're leaving it for your kids. And we owe them a better future than that. Let's design that future for them now, as they are in diapers. Did you know that a child will go through, I mean, Richard might know, will go through four to 5,000 dirty diapers before the time that they were potty trained? That's nearly one ton of waste per child. Now, recycling diapers, this seems like an unthinkable task, yet that too is already being done. They can be collected, sterilized, and put through a process that separates the individual components. Don't think about that too much. <laughs> <laughs> Do either of these look like a diaper to you? No. But they still function as a material. The fibers can be used in anything from pet litter to concrete. And the small plastic pellets can become such products as these roof tiles for your home or are even used to make bicycle helmets, though you probably won't be told that you're wearing a diaper on your head. <laughs> My niece here, who, when I go over to her house, she's collected everything from cardboard pizza boxes to license plates to give to me when I get over there, um, uses a glue for her crafts pro craft projects made from recycled styrofoam. You know that new big screen TV you just bought? Well, the styrofoam around it, it's not, it's not trash, because its next function is as glue. And that's a main point. So when something loses its initial function, that does not mean it has no function. I'll show you another example. At first glance, you might think that the skateboard is made from recycled rubber. But if you look closely, there are scales along its surface which allude to its origin. Shaped like a fish, this skateboard is actually made using discarded fishing nets. These nets pose a major threat to marine ecosystems and make up an estimated 10% of the ocean's plastic pollution. This one skateboard represents a small change in a sea of plastic. That styrofoam, I mean that glue, a change in the way we see styrofoam. Those roof tiles a change in the way we see diapers. And there are endless examples of how you, too, can see beyond trash. Products made using recycled materials are already available to you today. And I promise you that every material thing in your life will one day be made using recycled materials. We're not that far away. Just remember that you are never choiceless. You are in control of what you buy. You decide what to use. Stop thinking of yourself as a consumer and start thinking of yourself as a temporary user. Now, since I walked up on stage, we've continued adding 16,000 pounds per second to landfills. You almost forgot about it, right? For us to cross all of these bridges together, the first thing that we need to recycle is our thinking. Thank you.